Who Lord? Who Lord? Who gonna ride this train? The boat. Who Lord? Who Lord? Who gonna ride? The bright I said, who Lord? And the who beautiful Lord, who gonna ride are just train? some of the words to describe world renowned artist Jonathan Green's train? incredible paintings. In 1955, Jonathan Green was born in Gardens Corner, South Carolina, where he experienced the Gullah culture firsthand. But what is the Gullah culture? A group of African Americans living in coastal regions of South Carolina, Georgia, and northeastern parts of Florida that are in touch with their African roots. Through the oral language of Gullah, a mixture of African and English-based Creole, you can learn the things that are most important to the Gullah people. Things like family, faith, respect, and a deep connection with their African roots. Jonathan Green was born with a call, the placenta membrane, wrapped around him. In his own Gullah community, this was shown to be uh, indication that the child was going to be special. While his mother was in New York, he looked to his grandparents as parental figures. So having been born and raised in a household with grandparents, they knew immediately the signs of my being special and having been born with the placenta membrane, the call. His childhood would later become the inspiration for his art, transforming his life from ordinary to extraordinary. He joined the military where he had aspirations of becoming an illustrator for them, but instead he would have to become a chef. He soon dropped out and pursued a career in the visual arts. Jonathan Green says that he was lucky enough to have art teachers from Europe where he learned to paint like the masters. I was very fortunate to have older instructors. My instructors were the, the very finest of artists from Europe. Because it was after World War II, and they came over to the United States, you know, fleeing Europe. And uh, many of them could not get jobs because they were Jewish people in America. To deal with it. I never thought about a style. I I was very interested in surrealism uh, because it looked magical. I could just create anything, and then I became very interested in primitive art and folk art. But I, I, I became interested in it as something that I could do. Mm -hmm. So I imitated that. And until I got to a point where you go, okay, yeah, I've done enough of this. I know what's going on here. And then I would just, I, so I constantly kept moving around to different forms and expression of art. His vision or reason for his artwork was to correctly depict African American children in society. The children of the African American culture simply don't see themselves on the walls in churches, on the walls in museums and cultural centers. They see everyone else, but they don't see themselves. So I've dedicated my life to sort of balancing that act, if you will, so that African-American kids, Euro-American kids, can see an eclecticness of people that actually live in their culture. As a member of the Gullah culture, living it day to day, experiencing it firsthand, overcoming obstacles and challenges within the culture, Jonathan Green took his culture and transformed it into a universal language of art so that we could better understand the Gullah culture. Jonathan Green used his voice as an artist to become an activist and to speak for the things that he believed in and wanted to voice out on. One of these projects that he uses his voice for is the Low Country Rice Project. Concept and an awareness to get people into dialogue and understanding more accurately history 
and what occurred during the past 300 years of history in this country. And to have people look at and understand the, the, the real value of economics, mm -hmm. monies that are made based on people, based on labor, slavery, whatever form. It's mm -hmm. an economy. If the economy was as wealthy as it is uh, historicalized and documented, then who were the people that caused the economy? And that way, you then begin to look at these people from a perspective of coming, you know, being brought here from West African culture and creating this 300 year economy that built everything. And so people can no longer look at them as just being your slaves. Yeah. Jonathan Green also uses his knowledge to help other artists. I hope that, uh, you know, as a part of whatever mentoring I they got from me that it would involve being kind, mm. uh, uh, being a humanitarian, that's very, very important to me. And, uh, and really be a, a catalyst for helping other communities find themselves in the arts. See, every community should have an artist like me. Mm. Every community. One of his passions is promoting the importance and impact of fine arts in schools. He says that fine arts are not something to be shied away from. I definitely want to bring into your community because it's such an incredible PR yeah. source. I mean, to have artists that are actually doing uh, drawings and paintings of buildings and people, and, and then it goes under your town. You know, this is what, you know, St. Augustine looks like or Georgetown looks like. Jonathan Green doesn't only want arts in school, he puts them there. Locally, Jonathan Green has donated a print of his artwork to Horry County Schools area high schools. He has also helped shape the curriculum and the importance of art at the Sanders Clyde Creative Art School, a legendary school in Charleston where he paint, painted a mural in and donated his funds to create an extraordinary place of creation. He also uses his voice to go to schools and talk about the importance of fine arts. Have purposely negated the importance of fine arts. Jonathan Green has used his voice as an artist to spread his activism about the culture and community that he grew up in. Patricia Goodwin, the executive director of the Franklin G. Bureau Simon B. Chapin Art Museum of Myrtle Beach, says that she has learned many lessons from working with Jonathan. For the greater good, you may help one student, two students, um, you may help a museum and emerging artist, but to go along with that talent, you have the potential to touch countless lives, and Jonathan has done just that. Throughout his life, Jonathan Green has shown leadership and legacy through everything he does, whether it's spreading his Gullah culture with art or educating people with his activism. He has had a tremendous impact on South Carolina history. Our visitors. So not only were they experiencing the painting, but they could realize the story behind the painting. And we actually had to have boxes of tissues in our galleries because people were so moved by what they saw. And they realized that there was a connection, that everybody had a connection to the artwork. And that brought tears to many people's eyes over that summer. And although he is still alive today, he still, as much as ever, has an impact on the Gullah community. He educates unaware people the importance of the Gullah community, bringing the Gullah culture and its people to life by depicting the culture in a historically accurate setting. Each and every day, he is adding on to his legacy. Who Lord, who Lord, who gonna ride this train? Who Lord, who Lord, who gonna ride this train? I said.